Welcome to Tinkering with Gaver. I'm Gaver, and this is my workshop. I'm very excited to be here today. We're going to do some exciting things today, try and make our cardboard musical instrument better. And the reason I want to do it better is we got an amazing video postcard from our producer, Sayuri, who is um, going to share with us one of her favorite musical instruments. And if you would like to do the activity with me today, uh, in our previous episode, we built this simple triangular box to build the, uh, to make the instrument with, and we used a rubber band as our string to make noise. But today, we're going to try to build it in such a way that we can use an actual string as the um, music producing element, the sound producing element. So if you want to build along with me uh, today, we are going to use our usual tools, tape, knife, scissors, and um, some cardboard, obviously. We'll use some new cardboard. You'll need a piece of string. And that's probably about it. I think I, I hope we don't need anything fancy than that. Maybe you're going to need, and maybe we will need, um, another chopstick. It's not bad, but she's going to show us another way to make music with um, a string and a different way to get it to vibrate. So without further ado, take it away, Sayuri. Hi, Gaver. Hope you're doing well, staying inside and keeping busy. Um, one thing I'm doing while I'm staying inside is playing a lot of music. I find it really contemplative, but also challenging. Um, one instrument that I don't practice on as much as I probably should is this violin that I got to fix up and learn about one of my ears at Brightworks. So I'm just going to show you all the parts that it has. This is called a scroll. Pretty much every violin has this twisty part right here. It's just kind of decorative, I think. Uh, this is a tuning peg. This tunes each of the strings in kind of big chunks. So. If you think about a clamp, this is kind of like the big squeezy. <laughs> uh, and then down here, uh, on the tailpiece, are there fine tuners? So this is like the little squeezy of a of a clamp to fine tune those strings. This is the the neck. It's you can kind of tell if it's a viola or a violin based on how long the neck and the body are. This is the smallest piece of a string instrument in a swing, string quartet and so that's how long the neck is. Um, this piece that the that the strings rest on is called the nut. It kind of, after the nut, the action of the strings, which means the space between this the, uh, the strings and the fingerboard increases a lot until they kind of lift off, but this is one of the points of contact that the violin has with the strings. Uh, this here is the bridge. This is probably my favorite part. I tried to cut one on the bandsaw when I was learning how to, how to fix these. Um, so this bridge is what holds the strings up at the level they're supposed to be, and the bridge is only held on to the violin by the tension of these strings. So if I were to change these strings, the bridge would just fall off and uh, you can move it back and forth. Just move it. It's supposed to be about in the middle between this thing and this thing, I think. So it's a little bit off. Um, all the strings are in the standard uh, G, G, D, A, E, or G'day. <laughs> it's probably not how professionals call it. 
but I just try to remember that I um these are the F holes this is where the sound comes out of to make it so that it's kind of a, a springy um, instrument doesn't make sense this down here is just called the button the button and it's also just held on well the button is attached to the the violin but the tailpiece is just held on by tension by these two little cords that wrap around the button and the and attach to the strings this here is the chin rest you rest your chin here and proper violin form dictates that you that none of the weight of the violin is really held by your hand so you should just be able to hold on to it with your with your chin and I'm wearing a wool sweater so maybe it's a little too much friction not enough friction um and this is the back this is what the back looks like it's really shiny I didn't have anything to do with that <laughs> uh Let me show you the bow. Keep it in this plastic sheath to keep it clean and stuff. Um, so here's the bow. I always never really knew what the bow was until I saw one at Brightworks. So extra hair, we can just clip that. So a bow is made out of like a piece of wood and a bunch of like horse tail strings. I don't really know if you can see that, but it's literally just like some hair <laughs> on a piece of wood and every couple years if you're a real violinist you will replace your bow because the, the horse hairs get sparse. Um, this part where the, the horse hair connects to the bottom is called the frog. This part uh, that includes the black part that you kind of hang on to when you are doing the violin things. Uh, this right here is the screw. So there's a screw in here that loosens. When I turn it, it loosens these horse hairs for storage. So now you can see that they're they're all wobbly and flaccid. And then when I'm ready to play again, just tighten it up. And bam, like a tightrope. It's a really long bow. Um, so this is called the bow stick. This is called the bow hair. This here is the tip or the point. It's just the top of the bow. And on some, or no, it's right here. This is the grip. There's like a leather piece right here. And like this looks like a spring kind of piece. And this is also where you kind of hold the, the bow when you're playing violin. So these horse hairs, when they, when they rub against the strings, they basically just make a terrible squeaking sound unless you are a real violinist and you get it exactly right. So if I have this tuned to G D, G D A E, I should just be able to run this. Against the string and you should be able to see it vibrate with the note G. are kind of just built that way for bougie people. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's my violin. Um, please enjoy the following clip of me playing Hot Cross Buns, a, a beginner's classic from a very flattering angle from the, ca from the camera's point of view.
you for that, Sayuri. That was so uh, fun to get to see the violin that you had repaired and restored. Such a beautiful instrument and made with such incredible precision. Those little tiny tuners to adjust the sound on the string. Brilliant. And I'm not sure we can achieve that level of precision in tuning, but it would be fun to try and come up with a way to very carefully tune so that unlike in the previous episode, I don't end up spending nine minutes trying to retune my ukulele. Maybe what we can do though is take inspiration from this, combine it with some ideas from Sayuri's violin, and we can make a much more musical and easy to tune instrument. Back to the drawing board. So Sayuri did a great job of explaining some of the names of these parts of the musical instrument. And her violin had a lot of the same parts. And in particular, I liked that we now have a name for this piece right here that keeps the strings up off of the neck. So I thought, and I took some notes while she was talking, I thought I would just fix up our diagram from yesterday's episode to help us uh, give names to these parts. So as we design new uh, solutions to the problem, we would be able to talk about it. So this part here was called the nut and I have my little notebook over here so that I can remember everything she told me. Uh, the part down uh, where she had her little tiny adjusters, she called a tailpiece, but then the part that we have similar, we don't have that tailpiece part, but the part that we have similar is this piece of chopstick, which she called the bridge. And I like um, I like that we can we now have a nut and a bridge, and then she had something on the other side of her tuning pegs that was very much like what's on the ukulele. Um, these uh, I call them tuning pegs. She just called them pegs, but they're obviously doing the same thing, and uh, they work by winding the string around this peg to make it tighter. So these ones have a lot of tension on them. They have a lot of tension on them. The string is very tight, but maybe on our instrument, we don't have to be quite as tight. So we will obviously won't be using the same kind of material as a string on our cardboard uh, ukulele. ukulele. Her instrument had a sort of F shaped hole in here that looked kind of like this and they were symmetrical I noticed which I thought was very pretty um, that would be like that so hers had that those f-shaped holes to I think let the sound out of the uh, body of the instrument and my uke, as you can see, just has this circular shaped hole. So that's, um, that's obviously a sort of decision that we have to make, is what kind of hole do we want to put. And our prototype from the previous episode is just open on the ends. And that's another solution to letting the sound out. But you can see that my string not making nearly as much sound as the ukulele. Ukulele. I'm trying to remember to say it. It turns out it's a Hawaiian word, and it turns out that I've been saying it wrong my whole life. So I'm trying to say it better. Ukulele. So that was kind of interesting too. And the other thing that her uh, violin had was that beautiful 
a curl on the headpiece, which I think she was right when she said it's it's a decoration. But the top of her violin had this beautiful wooden carved um, sort of uh, wave almost. And that's what had the, at the end where her tuning pegs were so that she could tighten up her strings. Um, and again, I think we'll have to come up with something for tuning our string, but it might not be that because that looks like it would be hard to do in cardboard. What could we do that would uh, help us build a version of this that could carry a string? And the first thing that I notice when I think about carrying a string is that this rubber band, I'm just going to take off the bridge or nut, <laughs> um, is that the rubber band is taking advantage of the fact that it's one single loop and it's just wrapping all the way around the instrument. So that's, um, that's not the same for our piece of string, which has two ends. So we're going to need some way to anchor this end. And I'm worried that if we just tie it, if we made a hole in the cardboard and just made a knot, it would just pull through the cardboard. Um, it seems to me as soon as we put any tension on it, that knot would just pull right through those layers of paper. The only idea that I've come up with is to tie this around another chopstick. And when we come, where is it? When we come down off of the nut, we'll come through a little hole in the cardboard and this chopstick will be preventing the string from pulling through the cardboard on the other side. But you can see with a triangle shape, that's not going to be that great. So maybe the first thing to do is to change the shape of the instrument and of the neck. And the thing that I've been imagining because I always like to draw these things first in my imagination, is a bridge, a nice flat bridge like we had before, out of a sheet of cardboard. So there's our corrugation. And instead of one big triangle at the back, it has two triangles, sort of like this. And then a piece of cardboard across there to tie the two triangles together. So that would be sort of um, two, it, the ends of the cardboard would make a sort of W shape. And then we just put another piece of cardboard across the back to tie them together. And then that's what the chopstick is resting on. So our new nut would be here and come across to here. And then we make a hole. And if I use a different color, maybe this diagram will get a little easier to understand. We'll have the string go up over the chopstick, down to the bridge. We'll put the bridge here. Yeah, I'm kind of liking how this would go. This will go over the bridge and it'll go down. And on the back side will be another chopstick. That's the one that the string will tie to. And so the string will go through that hole and down through another hole, whoops, I guess that should be black, down through another hole, and then around the chopstick on the other side and be tied off. So that way we can tension this however we need to, and um, it will allow us to kind of tune that a little bit. So, um, and it'll be the chopstick spreading out all of the 
tension of the string onto as much cardboard as possible, and maybe it can resist that. So let's try building that. I think we've got a pretty good anchor here on this end and we have a challenge now to figure out some form of tuning down at this end and I can tell that we're getting close to something because I can tighten this a little bit here and hear something So we just have to figure out how we're going to tighten this. And I definitely think we're going to need to go over that to get it tight. And the thing that I'm thinking about is how if this piece of string were long enough to reach here, I could tighten them against each other. I would need another... Um, some kind of, I would need another piece of chopstick there to protect it and then I could pull them against each other. And that's the only thing I can think of right now that I could build pretty easily. So I'm going to make one more piece for here for the string to come over and one more piece for here. So I need two more pieces out of this. And
to try and solve the how do we tune it and I think I'm going to rely on a sort of simple tensioning system between these two loops where I use this green string to pull the two yellow loops together. So let's see how that goes. When I was assembling, I sort of felt like this could work. So I'm just going around. I have it tied off above that loop and now I'm just going to pull a little bit here and see you can see that it's pulling this chopstick f this way a little bit there's a lot of tension on the chopsticks and I might not have gotten that one in exactly the right spot but See, if I put the tuner here, then we can, let's see, if I put it here, then maybe we can see it. And I'm just going to pull in on this side. Well, I think if I just went around this loop through the holes again one more time I could get enough um, you know, like friction that it might stay in tune a little bit and I wouldn't have to hold the tension with my fingers so so that's twice around there's two loops of string on each end plus the tie off up here so when I tension this, I think you'll see that once I tension it, the rope kind of the string kind of gets caught on itself. And so it just stays under that tension. So let's see what we've got here. So there's the A, but let's see if we can get to the B. So when I let go of it, it's still coming out of tune. I think I have to go around uh, one more time. So I'm going to try that right now. Let the tension out. And I'm just following my, the same way I went around last time. Just keep going the same way. I'm not sure if that's like the best way to do it, but I feel like anything else in the string will get tangled or it'll tie itself into a knot and I won't be able to adjust it. Oh, now it's getting caught when I try to tune, when I try to tighten it, it's leaving a lot of loose string. Okay, there we go. All right. Yep, I can just pull on it to tighten it. And... See if we can get to D. C sharp, halfway there. As I tighten this, I can feel something moving. Oh, look what happened to our chopstick. Our chopstick came up. And is rolling down the back. I'm going to see if I can get just a little bit more. We were so close to getting to the D. Let's see. 
Hey. All right. Well, I'm going to call that <laughs> ah, that was fun. That was kind of an interesting project and it turned out the hard thing to figure out was how to keep a tuning in there. And I think we're close to something that kind of works. Maybe one more iteration to get that working. Building something like that really makes me appreciate how much thought has gone into the design of one of these kinds of things. And uh, an instrument is truly an instrument, like, like, a, um, like a specialized tool designed to allow for human expression. And um, one of the things, one of the very first things that I learned how to do on this ukulele was to play this uh, uku, ukulele. One of the first things I learned to play was this little, funny little m melody, and I'll just play it for you here and say, um, thanks for spending some time with me today. I hope this was as interesting for you as it was for me. <laughs> I know I get kind of obsessed about things and I lose track of time, and hopefully the time lapse lets you see that happen. That's our show. Be good to each other. Take care of yourself. Remember that the greatest playground you'll ever find is the one right up here in your own noggin. Mm -hmm.